it's Lucas Green here and I'm back with another Beast Quest review for a new series, Series 28, uh, The Neverworld, I believe. Bear with me. I think it's the Neverworld one. Uh, it is the Neverworld, yeah. So, Series 28, The Neverworld, uh, oh, yeah. So, months like always guys, in-depth story analysis and my overall thoughts on this epic adventure. So if you haven't already, make sure, make sure you've read this book before watching this review, unless you don't care for spoilers. But that being said, let's get to the video. Our heroes were spectating a competition as they were selecting a new war selecting a warrior to take up the mantle of master slash mistress of the beast for Tangala. The fight was about to get underway until an unexpected earthquake hit. Oh, yeah, an unexpected earthquake came by and hit them. Tom tried to save the young warriors. He was too late and they got sent through a portal. They received a message from Malvel that he was back and he wanted the purple jewel from Tom's belt in exchange for the uh, for these uh, four warriors. Tom refused to give the jewel. He attempted to grab the, his bird henchmen, uh, but the blur flew off and they stole a feather. And they could use it to teleport them, use its teleporting power to get to the Neverworld where the uh, captured uh, warriors were. They entered with, they entered with a uh, not so trustworthy map called Zalo, which you'll find out later on in the story. Um, they entered the Neverworld, hearing a voice. Turns out it was the map, like I said, Zalo. Yes, the map can talk like Dora the Explorer. The map explains that he was Zalo, trapped in this form. He's also a dick, stalling our heroes with riddles and puzzling questions. After a bit of bitching, Eleanor is captured by the bird creatures. Tom rescues Eleanor, they carry on, find Nolan, and try to free him from a skull, which is a trap and reveals the first beast. A siren reveals, which is the beast, a siren reveals that he, was, he, that he, can, breathe, he can breathe his air, which becomes this mist ability. The mist, there, that can create, yeah, so his breath can create thick mist, which causes coughing and horrible stench to throw, up, throw the enemies off guard. The mist faded and Nolan hit a siren with hit a siren with Tom attempting to a rescue because like uh, of all the characters uh, Nolan the uh, like the half blind guy was able to hit um, a siren in the mist so now a siren could be going for him for revenge Tom tries to rescue uh, him but our heroes noticed that a siren and Nolan were gone they split up Tom found Nolan he sent him home to row two and headed to uh, headed to Eleanor to deal with the fleshless killer. Our heroes thought, a, thought of a plan to lure Siren off a cliff, but they needed bait to lure him to... Need, yeah, he need, they needed... Yeah. Tom needed bait to lure him to them. They asked... They asked uh, Zalo to start to sing a song. He did. The beasts kept... The, uh, a Siren came. They dodged. He fell. Took Tom with him and survived the fall. Now planning to kill our hero. Eleanor distracted a siren, allowing Tom to chop off the beast's skull, making his body collapse, and allowing a siren to rest. However, Malvel showed up, to, showed up, and took the rib cage of a siren, and planned a bigger battle later on down the road. I'm assuming. Um, but yeah, there we have Siren, the fleshless killer. Overall, I'd say a good starter book. It has a, it does have the unique um, abilities. I'll get into the beast in a bit, but overall, as a story, I think it's okay. It's it's not that bad, I'd say. It's probably one of the better starters. Um, you've got you start off with a strong, intimidating beast. The story is kind of like a, a mix of stuff we've seen before, like uh, series eighteen with the like, like the trial of heroes or a bunch of warriors. Only it doesn't involve beasts uh, at first. The whole trial is just them fighting each other, and then like the one who, um, all right, I think it's, it's either no, I think it's either them fighting each other or it was them fighting like the Tangalian guards or something, like um, to see who will be. Uh, the best, and then they judge. Um, but regardless, it also um, takes elements from series three by like luring it, some, you know, luring it back to Malvel's one of Malvel's strong places where he has power over of. So there's that vibe too. So it does have a few elements from previous works, and uh, I'm curious to see where the story goes. I mean, I mean, I already know from the first two books. The other time I've read both, um, but yeah. So overall, though, it is. You can see where this is going, though. Each book will contain Tom rescues an ally, one, one of these four kids takes them back home, and they will progress on to the next one until they get to Malville. So, that's how it is. As for the story itself, well, well it's an okay story, I'd say. Um, for our characters, Tom, um, 
he gets more focus in the story, um, as he, he feels a bit more like when he goes to rescue these um these kids that he feel he wants to be he's the most he wants to be, he's the most focused on getting these kids safe for their protection. Maybe because Mike Marvel is his old enemy, and he feels like a personal grudge to him, especially since one of his plans involved Taladon's death. So there is that. I can just, I can feel that vibe from Tom. Um, as for Eleanor, she just kind of gets shafted this series, and what, that follows through to the next book too, because she's more like used as like a tool to like. So we we need uh, Eleanor to be in danger, so to, uh, so that Tom and this new companion can rescue her, so that the kid character can get development, which doesn't really matter too much because the kid character is going to be sent home anyway. But whatever. Um, so it is kind of sad that Ellen gets kind of shafted, but she does have her moments to shine in this book at the end where she distracted, um, a siren to allow Tom the killing blow. Uh, we also have Nolan. I'm not going to say too much about Nolan because he didn't really do much. He just felt a bit weird that this character of all characters was able to hit a siren with, um, his one good eye and, and that missed. So it is kind of a stretch that of all characters he did it. And he kind of gets the shaft as soon as he gets rescued, he gets, you know, taken out. And then he gets rescued and like, go home with the can of it. And isn't really, he just tried to put up a, an argument, but he just gets thrown back at him and he just stays there. So he kind of got the shaft. It's all over the map. Now he's going to get more development through the series as we go. But he is kind of a dick. He just, he's supposed to be the comic relief, I guess, of the series. Which I, is nice to see that we're getting more com, com, comedic elements. Because um, Beast Quest is, is a bit more known for its seriousness on some series. And it rarely ever shows com, comical nature to this degree. Because I'm just expecting a talking map. Um, but yeah, Zarlo is kind of a dick in, in the story. Just like telling our heroes uh, information at just the right moment when something bad happens. Or like after it happens. So kind of a dude, dick character. But he serves his purpose of getting our heroes to uh, one situation to another. Even if it leads into a bad one. Uh, Malvel, uh, he's just here to set up the plot really. Um, like just to say what he's how he survived, he was able to read the Book of Durfsin, which I think me and Adam both, both agreed on, uh, both me and Adam Ferns. Um, but yeah, so it, it was it was kind of expected to see him return when we knew that they would probably bring him back because he's like the, the Dark Vader of the series. So it was expected that he would return, even though I think my friend Adam is kind of a, like enough with Malvel when we were talking But we know we're not going to do that because he's too popular for that. But it, it's kind of like Series 9 where he's weak, and he needs a way to bar he best to bargain with Tom to get back hit to full strength. I mean, this time Tom's not having it, so at least he's shown that he's learned from those ordeals. But it is, but even though Marvel is weak, he's still able to you know show up at the very end to do his um to get, gather what he needs. Uh, as for a sire on the beast, I'd say it's a pretty good one. And if a skeletal beast able to re reassemble himself, um, but if the bones are crushed completely to bits then he can't reassemble himself that's what um that's how uh, me and um adam decided how he was able to beat a siren because like you're wondering like how did he beat him if he chopped his skull off can't just reattach it but, but we decided that the, the most logical action is like when a beast bone turns into like cr you know crumbs or you know like little small tiny pieces it's all cracked to bits then he can't really uh reform himself so there's that for you there and I think it was also established in Stritor and uh, Electro, that might be. I know it was more Electro as well. Um, I do like the Beast. I do like that the Beast has um, this mist ability, which kind of reminds me of Sultra, where it's able to. He uses the thick mist to kind of blind his enemies and throw them off with the stench. Kind of reminds me of uh, Coughing from uh, Team Rocket, where he's able to use that gas. So it, 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 can, it makes for a great escape attempt as well as a, a way to uh, sneak up on your enemies. So I do like that. Um, overall, though, I'd say I had a rather good time with Asyron. Um, after the first two books that I have read, I think it's uh, the best so far in my mind. Um, I'll explain that more when I read Sticks. I mean, I do like Sticks, but I'll get into that next review. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, smash that like button, subscribe to the good stuff, hit the notification bell record right down below, and I'll see you guys in the next uh, book review of Beast Quest, where I'll be doing Sticks: The Lurking Terror. Till next time, peace out. Hey guys, welcome back to Beast Quest, and here we are with book two of series twenty-eight, uh, Sticks the uh, Lurk, yeah, Sticks the Lurking Terror. 
So, we're now on book two of series 28, guys. And like always, in this story analysis and then my overall thoughts on this epic adventure. So if you haven't already, make sure you've read this book before watching this review, unless you guys don't care for spoilers. So that being said, let's get to it. Our heroes were about to head off to face the next beast when the evil spies of Malville, as in the birds, those evil birds that I mentioned in the last book, flew over, flew over, you know, the Janus birds. Our heroes had to stay down to avoid them. Our heroes uh, were able to avoid them, of course, and our heroes wandered towards the location of where the next beast was supposed to be. However, they came across some blinding flowers that made it hard to see for, t for Tom. Eleanor escorted him away from the flowers, however, they ended up at some sentient vines. They escaped, however, despite, despite Tom regaining his sight, he had lost Eleanor. Tom had found Eleanor, captured in the vines. Uh, she, she was affected by the flowers too, so he rescued her by chopping them down. He gave her some water to heal her sight, and, out, and our heroes, despite the protests of Zarlo, the map, continued on their journey, finding the axe of Katya. They arrived on... They, they, they carried on via raft to locate the next warrior, until they were halted by a stranger. Our heroes discovered it was Katya. She told them when she, uh, when she got here, she met Styx. She ran off hiding from the beast, and our group began observing the air until Styx showed up. It made it difficult to fight him in his habitat. Suddenly, he destroyed half the raft and captured Eleanor. Eleanor was dragged underwater. Uh, Tom wanted to send Katya home for her safety. She denied him uh, that, and Eleanor was revealed to be alive. She explained she had escaped and came up with a plan alongside Tom to use the remaining half of the raft as bait to lure sticks out. However, if they did this, they would have no transport. But they did it anyway. They set off the other half of the raft off to Styx and of course he destroyed it and Tom faced Styx, got his ass kicked and he was facing Styx underwater uh, this made him lose the fight and Styx pressed pressed on preparing for another attack. At this point it was revealed that Styx was an, an egotistical slash cunning beast at this point. Also it does beg the question of why uh, Eleanor and Katya weren't helping at this point until the end until the next chapter which we're about to get into but whatever um Tom is saved by Eleanor and Katya, finally, a bit late, but whatever. They plan a new attack, but realize Styx stole his belt, Tom, as in his dual one. Tom attempted to rodeo the beast, however it backfired and made Tom get swallowed. Tom, refusing death, plunged his sword into Styx's, uh, to, you know, into Styx's mouth for air. He caused Styx to vomit. Tom uh, got sent out, and our heroes dragged him to safety. This also caused Styx to get sick and unwilling to fight. Katia wanted to finish off Styx, Tom spared, spared his life, as killing was wrong, which is debatable in some, some notes. Styx returned his uh, belt because he was uh, free from the spell. Due to an act of mercy, he sent Katia the, um, they sent Katia, leaving our heroes, you know, on their quest to the next beast. So, yeah, the story is pretty much uh, more straightforward compared to Osiron, but that Osiron's, you know, got to deal with the exposition of what the story is. But for this one, it's more of, now it's got the ball rolling, it's more very straightforward what it is. Go to, locate where we need to go next. Go ahead, find uh, our next comp the next character that we're supposed to save. Team up with that character, and, or, team, uh, but there was a nice change there, where, you know, they send up that, they sent that character off, back to safety, and then they fight the beast, no. Here they um, team up with that character to beat this beast, which is debatable, but still, it gets the job done, and uh, it ends really nicely. So, on a story level, I would say a siren is better, and I'll get to the reason why right right now. Um, this is because, for me, a siren I find as a better book is because on a story level, it doesn't contain any plot holes. Where Styx does. Styx's plot hole is, the big one is, why didn't Eleanor and Katia help Tom while he was underwater. Because Katya herself said she wanted to stay and help. And Eleanor, what we see later on, she she's not really injured in the book. She may have been exhausted, but she still was able to fight and, you know, carry on. So the big the big plot hole is that. Uh, whereas it did something similar happen to this with a siren, only with a siren there was an excuse because a siren was injured, and that's why he was in the background. So it is kind of confusing then why they had... Uh, no reason whatsoever why um, Eleanor and Katia were um, put in the background until the uh, they were needed for the next chapter. But 
It just felt like they could have helped them in the water and they chose not to for, some, for whatever reason. I feel like there should have been, like, if you're going to do that, there should have been, like, an explanation of why they weren't helping, where, like, Eleanor was injured or Katia, you know, had to go and get something for him. There could have been an excuse, but there was none at all. Um, anyway, though, on to the characters. Tom. Uh, yeah, Tom is doing the main work once again in this story. Uh, he's fighting... Um, he's the one who uh, has a little uh, back and forth with Katya. Eleanor is more used as, once again, a plot device, which we'll get to, which is kind of sad. Uh, but he's the one who fights the Beast mainly through... He does get his butt kicked, but it's his plan that defeats Styx. So it's mainly Tom doing everything in this book, really. Um, apart, the only thing that Eleanor did was uh, lead him away from the flowers, which isn't saying much. And, of course, um, that's all that she really did in this book. So, Eleanor was kind of shafted, this one. Speaking of Eleanor, yeah, there's not much to say. All she did was lead Tom away from the flowers. Um, then she got, I think, taken out a peg. She needed rescuing, like, I think, two ice. Um, but, you know, overall... It was um, kind of a shame that Eleanor's getting like the back burner here, but I suppose it makes sense to make way for new characters. But even still, those new characters are kind of getting shafted. But Katya, as a character, as we'll get into right now, I like her only because that she's the one who's more rebellious. She denies going back. She wants to help, and um, I think her assistance did pay off. As uh, with her aid, they were able to do a lot more than the least than they expected them to. So. I do appreciate that, but it does kind of shaft uh, Nolan, but whatever. So, Katia, pretty good. I do like her. Zorlo, uh, there's not much to say about him. He's not, he's basically stick to his usual formula. He's like the Jar Jar of the Beast Quest, and you don't know who Jar Jar Binks is. He's basically that type of character. Um, I'm hoping at the end of this series, or the next one, he gets reverted to his wizard form, or whatever, and then gets sent back to Avantia, because this character I could do without, that's just me. But, because he's... Mainly luring our heroes into danger or trying to tick, piss them off, which is just gonna is what they, do, they don't really need that right now. So he's one. Of, if he's a men, if you want to consider him as a mentor, he's not really one of the best ones. Um, Sticks himself, the beast, um, very intelligent, very cunning. He's treating it like a game just to get his food. Because um, once you enter his territory, he sees like a challenge. So he kind of reminds me of someone like Sean Yu in a way from Disney. But you know, I do like him. Um, and then he shows mercy and compassion to when he gets defeated, because that's how the spells work, apparently, of Dervsin, that when you defeat a beast and show an act of mercy, the spell is broken. So that's... and It's debatable if that was the same case of Siren, but for this one, okay. Overall, I'd say Styx is a pretty good book. It's one major... It does have the potential to be the best, but because of that one flaw it has in the story, I would have to say it's Siren is better. If it wasn't for that, I would say Styx was, is pretty much perfect. Because it did, it was able to do, it was able to improve on the companion stuff more than uh, Nolan did um, uh, and uh, Siren. But overall, Styx, great book. I'm um, really happy how it came out and I'm looking forward to see how the series progresses when I get the other two books. So thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed how, how this review, uh, review came out. If you did, smash the like button, subscribe, the good stuff, hit the notification bell, right corner down below. So you can stay tuned for all Beast Quest related topics on the channel and various months of other content that you can find here. So next look always, peace out. Hey guys, welcome back to Beast Quest series number 28, book 3, Captiva the Shrieking Siren. Now, as you can tell before I'm going into this, I'm doing this with a audio method for a change instead of the, va the basic visual of seeing the book in my room. That's because I don't really have an, a, a good tripod to keep, it, keep up the camera, so that's why this is what it is. And it's always good for a nice change. So... Uh, here we are with book three as we continue on the series of 28 now. So, Captive the Shrieking Siren. So, like always, in the story analysis and then uh, my overall thoughts on this epic adventure. So, make sure you've read this book before watching this review, unless you don't care for spoilers. Anyway, let's get on with this. Uh, our heroes met Malvel, who demanded the jewel, which was pointless by... Uh, which is pointless, as Malvel was was denied and he summoned a breeze into making them lose their enchanted map Zorto, or sorry Zorlo because you know how Marvel is, he wants the jewel to get out of the prison realm, heroes are like no, so Marvel's like I'll screw you guys over, our heroes walk on through a creepy forest which turns out to be alive, they encounter dead birds and they 
feel, felt bad walking through it until they found M Myandra's trident. Um, the, he the forest appeared to be giving off some strange voices, about to split our heroes apart. Tom found Myandra, who explained she, she heard about she heard her mother, and Tom realised that they should be more careful, as Tom felt it was suspicious on my on Myandra's trap, you know. Captiva, pl Captiva plays mind tricks, which l look with our heroes through the forest, leading them towards herself. Our heroes face Captiva. They will appear to be winning, however, they, the more they fought, the weaker our heroes became. They felt it best to retreat to beat her, probably, however, Eleanor got a broke. However, in the scuffle, of course, Eleanor got a broken leg. Tom tells Myandra to watch Eleanor and he heal her with his jewel, while Tom lures Captiva out of the forest. He, he fails, gets captured, and gets his ass kicked. Then she lures Eleanor in for double punishment. Eleanor wisely Captiva's trick, and Tom broke free. Myandra did her act of heroism by blocking Captiva's mouth so she could choke on her own amber, not wanting to die without victory. She wanted to make Myandra pay for what she's, you know, trying to do to her with the choking and all that, so she took her away. Tom followed, followed, ignoring Captiva's impression of Malvel, and then, then strikes Captiva down, freeing Myandra, and they send her home. Tom followed, Tom followed, ignoring Captiva's, yeah, I read that one. So, yeah, and, yes. Oh yeah, I'm already caught up then. But yeah, there it is, guys. Uh, my little read down of the story of uh, of uh, Captiva. Uh, overall, it's a nice, enchanting tale. Uh, it's nice to see a tree beast portrayed in a different way how it normally is, and it does make into an probably the best tree beast. But again, there's so much competition for that. Um, as for the story, it's pretty good. As for the characters, Tom, he's more of the main character for this, I would say, than Eleanor is. That's just me a bit more focused on his doubts and all that as a hero, putting people, people's lives on the line. Eleanor, she's there, but to be fair, she's kind of, in this book, it feels like she's kind of, you know, used as a crutch, literally, to uh, progress the story. As like, oh, I need to rescue her, so I need to do this kind of thing. Myandra, I do like her character. She is very honourable. She appreciated what Tom did for her and was very honour bound to play that debt, and she did. I was expecting sort of a sacrifice, but I'm glad she didn't die. Uh, then, of course, we have the Beast Captiva, who is a interesting beast using her amber and her voice mimic mimicry, and she's able to. Her presence alone can make forests her domain. It gives her a field advantage. To trick her enemies, so a lot of useful abilities there. So good to hear from Captiva. So overall, guys, this has been my uh, read through of uh, Captiva, the, the Shrieking Siren. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, book. If you did, and this review, of course. If you did, smash that like button, subscribe, that good stuff, hit the notification bell, right corner down below. And I'll see you guys for the finale of this series. Till next time, like always, peace out. Hey guys, welcome back to Beast Quest, book four of series twenty-eight. The Crow, the Lightning Bird. So, as always, end of story analysis and my overall thoughts on this epic adventure. So let's wrap up another series. Our heroes were lucky to get Zarlo the map back. He seemed different as they reached a cliff full of Janus birds staring at them. The Janus birds revealed themselves as the final beast for Larkrow as they flickered to get f they flocked together to form this beast. And no doubt they were watching the entire time throughout the series. Tom gets his ass kicked and for some reason Velarcro was slowly focused on getting Tom. However, after using her energy attack, this caused Velarcro's beast form to rip apart and forced our birds into a retreat as they knocked Tom off the cliff. Tom swam out of the sea and helped Eleanor find the Hammer of Wraith. However, Velarcro came back and they fought again and knocked one of Velarcro's heads out, forcing her into a tree again. Uh, Zalo woke up wondering if our heroes were dead and they forced they forced him to spill the beans. He explains he was working for Malvel to lure our heroes into a trap. Before Eleanor can destroy Zalo, he promises to take them to Wraith. Tom says if he keeps his word, he will ask Daltek to try and reverse the spell on him. Uh, they arrive at Malvel's castle. Our heroes walk in underground a secret passage until they bump into Wraith. 
Our heroes were going to send Rafe home, but Tom's powers were weak in Malvo's domain. They walked into Malvo's beast arena, where he sent Velacro after them again. Velacro steps... Yeah, Velacro, you know, fights Tom, then pins Eleanor down, and before Velacro can kill our heroes, Rafe finishes the lightning bird off, so that takes care of that for us. Uh, let's see. Our heroes were sad, however... Uh, however, you know, they were sad because, um, uh, and basically Malva was able to get away. Uh, however, somehow Valarco recovered, but instead of fighting, he helped our heroes by transforming her, herself into a portal to transport heroes back out to Tangala because Malva took Tom's jewel in the fight. So he was one went back to Tangala. While Marvel had escaped, they'll be ready for him whenever he comes messing around. And we also have to remember it. We also have to remind ourselves that Tom doesn't have one of his jewels anymore. So there's that for you. But overall, it was a fun uh, story analysis. So now onto the characters. Tom, uh, main character, I would say he has a bit more going for him than Eleanor does. Um... A bit more of a determination on to cap to uh, recapture these young candidates. Helena, she's just there to be the token friend to help Tom through this journey. And nothing really that I saw stood out to her on a story level that you know, like, oh, that helped. And then we had Rafe. He was probably the best of the four candidates of of them out of them, only because he was able to do the most damage to a beast. Um, so uh, but he's probably my favorite. Uh, Velacro, she's an okay beast. It is nice to see um, an, another swarm beast for, formed from animals. Only this time it's birds. So it was nice to um, see that cre type of uh, swarm thing come back into play. And Velacro was a rather a challenging beast to be take down. She kept came, coming back for several rounds. And then, of course, Marvel. Um... This is probably one of his OK series, where he had, it's kind of like, you know, series 9 or 10, where he was weak, and he has to rely on, you know, backhand tactics to get what he needs. But overall, he, it kind of worked, he still got what he wanted in the end, and managed to escape the Never Realm, so, overall, not bad for him. So there it is, guys, my little analysis on, um... Uh, Velarco over Lightning Bird. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, story analysis, this review. If you did, smash that like button, subscribe, the good stuff, hit the notification bell right corner down below, and I'll see you guys for more videos on my channel. Till next time, like always, peace out.